Convention, No. 111, Concerning Discrimination in Respect of Employment and Occupation, done at Geneva on 25 June 1958, entry into force, 15 June 1960. Preamble The General Conference of the International Labour Organization, having been convened at Geneva by the governing body of the International Labour Office, and having met in its 42nd session on 4 June 1958, and having decided upon the adoption of certain proposals with regard to discrimination in the field of employment and occupation, which is the fourth item on the agenda of the session, and having determined that these proposals shall take the form of an international convention, and considering that the Declaration of Philadelphia affirms that all human beings, irrespective of race, creed or sex, have the right to pursue both their material well-being and their spiritual development in conditions of freedom and dignity, of economic security and equal opportunity, and considering further that discrimination constitutes a violation of rights enunciated by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopts this 25th day of June of the year 1958 the following convention, which may be cited as the Discrimination, Employment and Occupation. Convention, 1958. Article 1, 1. For the purpose of this convention the term discrimination includes, a, any distinction, exclusion or preference made on the basis of race, color, sex, religion, political opinion, national extraction or social origin, which has the effect of nullifying or impairing equality of opportunity or treatment in employment or occupation, b, such other distinction, exclusion or preference which has the effect of nullifying or impairing equality of opportunity or treatment in employment or occupation as may be determined by the member concerned after consultation with representative employers and workers' organizations, where such exist, and with other appropriate bodies. 2. Any distinction, exclusion or preference in respect of a particular job based on the inherent requirements thereof shall not be deemed to be discrimination. 3. For the purpose of this convention the terms employment and occupation include access to vocational training, access to employment and to particular occupations, and terms and conditions of employment. Article 2. Each member for which this convention is in force undertakes to declare and pursue a national policy designed to promote, by methods appropriate to national conditions and practice, equality of opportunity and treatment in respect of employment and occupation, with a view to eliminating any discrimination in respect thereof. Article 3. Each member for which this convention is in force undertakes, by methods appropriate to national conditions and practice, a. to seek the cooperation of employers and workers' organizations and other appropriate bodies in promoting the acceptance and observance of this policy, b to enact such legislation and to promote such educational programs as may be calculated to secure the acceptance and observance of the policy, c, to repeal any statutory provisions and modify any administrative instructions or practices which are inconsistent with the policy, d, to pursue the policy in respect of employment under the direct control of a national authority, e, to ensure observance of the policy and the activities of vocational guidance, vocational training and placement services under the direction of a national authority, f, to indicate in its annual reports on the application of the convention the action taken in pursuance of the policy and the results secured by such action. Article 4. Any measures affecting an individual who is justifiably suspected of, or engaged in, Activities prejudicial to the security of the state shall not be deemed to be discrimination, provided that the individual concerned shall have the right to appeal to a competent body established in accordance with national practice. Article 5. 1. Special measures of protection or assistance provided for in other conventions or recommendations adopted by the International Labour Conference shall not be deemed to be discrimination. 2. Any member may after consultation with representative employers and workers' organizations, where such exist, determine that other special measures designed to meet the particular requirements of persons who, for reasons such as sex, age, disablement, family responsibilities or social or cultural status, are generally recognized to require special protection or assistance.
shall not be deemed to be discrimination. Article 6. Each member which ratifies this convention undertakes to apply it to non-metropolitan territories in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution of the International Labour Organization. Article 7. The formal ratifications of this convention shall be communicated to the Director General of the International Labour Office for registration. Article 8. 1. This convention shall be binding only upon those members of the International Labour Organization whose ratifications have been registered with the Director General. 2. It shall come into force 12 months after the date on which the ratifications of two members have been registered with the Director General. 3. Thereafter, this convention shall come into force for any member 12 months after the date on which its ratification has been registered. Article 9. 1. A member which has ratified this convention may denounce it after the expiration of ten years from the date on which the convention first comes into force, by an act communicated to the Director General of the International Labour Office for registration. Such denunciation shall not take effect until one year after the date on which it is registered. 2. Each member which has ratified this convention and which does not, within the year following the expiration of the period of ten years mentioned in the preceding paragraph, exercise the right of denunciation provided for in this article, will be bound for another period of ten years and, thereafter, may denounce this convention at the expiration of each period of ten years under the terms provided for in this article. Article 10, 1. The Director General of the International Labour Office shall notify all members of the International Labour Organization of the registration of all ratifications and denunciations communicated to him by the members of the organization. 2. When notifying the members of the organization of the registration of the second ratification communicated to him, the Director General shall draw the attention of the members of the organization to the date upon which the convention will come into force. Article 11. The Director General of the International Labour Office shall communicate to the Secretary General of the United Nations for registration in accordance with Article 102 of the Charter of the United Nations full particulars of all ratifications and acts of denunciation registered by him in accordance with the provisions of the preceding articles. Article 12. At such times as it may consider necessary the governing body of the International Labour Office shall present to the General Conference a report on the working of this convention and shall examine the desirability of placing on the agenda of the conference the question of its revision in whole or in part. Article 13. 1. Should the conference adopt a new convention revising this convention in whole or in part, then, unless the new convention otherwise provides, a. The ratification by a member of the new revising convention shall ipso jury involve the immediate denunciation of this convention, notwithstanding the provisions of Article 9 above, if and when the new revising convention shall have come into force. b. As from the date when the new revising convention comes into force, this convention shall cease to be open to ratification by the members. 2. This convention shall in any case remain in force in its actual form and content for those members which have ratified it but have not ratified their revising convention. Article 14. The English and French versions of the text of this convention are equally authoritative.